Good evening and welcome to TTTV, news from amongst the bushes. The headlines tonight. Priest lambasts Strictly from Oma Pulpit. Brocka Man fights Shark in Rotten Lock. Derry Tress considers relocating to the West. Our top story tonight, Father Roger Hughes, one of the longest serving priests in the Oma area, has criticised the long running dance show on the BBC, Strictly Come Dancing, for its promotion of short frocks and unnecessary gyrations. Father Hughes, who won the Oma multi-faith jazz hands dancing competition earlier in the year, claims that the negative effect can be seen in the discos across Tyrone, which he attends to make sure the young people aren't having too much fun, as according to Father Hughes, Pain and misery gets you closer to eternal bliss. I've been watching this year's programme in order to gain tips for next year's jazz hand competition. As there's talk of that young sheriff a priest centre and straight out of my nooth. All I've seen is blades and knickers as the buck lap across the floor being lifted by big tan men with questionable sexuality. There's a girl on there and she must be about 20 stone. She is Fucking gyrating around with butts of her hanging out that she'd only be showing after the watershed, and even then with a clear warning. Last week I seen a blondie girl, and I had to re-watch the same clip about 50 times to see if she was actually wearing a skirt at all. Almost destroyed me sky box. I phoned the BBC up and says, hey, Dawn girl needs to be wearing a good long coat on her. Uh, so the next day she was voted out, so my words didn't fall on stony ground. Father Hughes proceeded to denounce X Factor, saying it was a load of balls, even worse than that El Dorado programme from a few years ago. And he continued by saying that Louis Walsh should be shot with a ball of his own shite. Father Hughes's housekeeper, 23-year-old former PH3 girl Hilary McCann from Galbally says she thinks that Father Hughes was exaggerating a bit as she sees him smirking away to himself and rubbing his knees, especially when his favourite dancer Natalie Lowe is on the screen. Rocka bulb fitter Desi Davidson yesterday claimed to have beaten off what he described as a beast of a shark during a charity swim on St Stephen's Day in Rohan Law, just outside New Mills. Rohan officials are now investigating the incident and have warned people not to take to the lock unless they feel confident of beating a shark in a scuffle. Mr Davidson, aged 46, was reportedly shaken up after the incident but has since managed to calm his nerves with what was described as an unmerciful feat of stout. Jesus, it was deadly like. I was just swimming away, raising money for the new Mountjoy Drunky Sanctuary. When I felt this presence behind me. I turned around, before I knew it, I was in a full blown fist fight with this shark. I don't think it was local. It was pummeling away with its big leathery fins. But I was given as good as I got. It was like punching leather at times. And I could hear the yelp side of it after I dished out an uppercut or, or a kidney punch. Both of us drew blood. But it swam off first, so in fairness, I, I, I'd say I got the batter of it. It was a traumatic experience. And I've been in the bath there since. I, 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 don't, I don't think it was a swan. Ne nearly sure about that. Although there were no witnesses, New Mills knitting expert Greta Gordon contacted TTTV last night to relate the story of being attacked by a dragon in the grounds of the castle last year during the Chinese New Year festivities. Rohan Castle security officials remain sceptical about the incident and maintain it could be Harry Campbell from Brackable larking about in the shark costume he said he was getting for Christmas. It was announced today that I saw the Rohan shark, mugs and t-shirts 
will be available to buy at the lock today. It has emerged in the last 20 minutes that Derry Trust Townland Committee have called an extraordinary meeting tonight to consider moving the whole area to somewhere west in the county. Listing a plethora of reasons, it appears that the move could take place with immediate effect, or at least before Christmas. Committee member Alfie Fitzgerald was adamant the motion will be passed. To tell you the truth, we're sick and tired of living down here. For 10 months of the year, the whole place is flooded, turning the turf to shite. Then, when the sun does come out for a few hours, the midges have you ate alive, as well as any flowers or plants that you foolishly attempted to grow. Add to that, you have the roar of the M1 up the road, and those bastards driving the trucks from Tumnamore to Cookstown, taking a shortcut through the Rathres, bucking up the roads which have to be re 10 times a year. Then there's that weird noise the lock makes on a windy night. Who in their right mind would want to live here? We're getting out. Derry Lachan has welcomed it. Them boys would live in their own shite. Information on where they are moving to appears sketchy at the minute and how the actual shifting of Derry Tresk to another part of the county will take place. Mr Fitzgerald attempted to clarify the situation. Sure it'll be no bother. Tonight we'll draw up the names of all the families in Derry Tresk and they'll receive a letter this week informing them of how and when to get to their new abode. If we have to shift houses brick by brick, we'll do it. Myself and another boy has spotted an area below Drum Quinn on the map with no name on it. We'll move there. The positives far outweigh the bother of moving. We'll be closer to Bendorn for holidays. Maybe Mickey Hart will start picking some of our lads. He doesn't like the East, you know. That's another thing. We'll be taking the pitch church, school, and most of the blackberries that haven't been infested by them, they're flies that are enormous this year. Derry Lochan Townland Committee Chairman welcomed the move, saying they plan to use the extra space to build some kind of Lockshore Visitor Centre to rip off the foreigners or people from the south. And finally, with the new year upon us, our reporters have been out and about with the sales and market shoppers in Cookstown. We leave you tonight with their hopes and wishes for 2013. Tune in again to TT TV News from Amongst the Bushes. The price of diesel has come down a bit in Castle Coffee. Might as well hope to grow wings. Miserable bastards. The government are turning a blind eye to women that beat the shit clean out of their husbands. That lazy whore of a man I have to need to wear high clean is arse into gear on a Saturday morning. Once a week we do. Uh, my hopes for 2013 is that uh, the women would wear less clothes in and around the streets. There's women around here, look see, and they've always got big jumpers and coats on, even in the summer. Now if the powers would tax you for the amount of clothes you wear, then the women would be more inclined to wear you know, loose blouses and, and, and re-skirts. I'm not getting any younger, but I would make more of an effort to get into the shops if the women would just share a couple of layers. Well, not the fat ones, though. My hopes for 2013 is for Mickey Hart to pick players from the southeast of the county. What are we ever doing, him, eh? There's talk that he ruined his car driving at 60 down the Anachmore Road in the 80s. Well, that's what we deal with day in and day out. We're all driving 1980s cars from Lithuania now. Don't hold us against us, Mickey. Good looking priest, so we're starved up here in Donamana of young very clergy. So the last parish priest was so old, he did the mass in Latin. Oh, someone like your boy out of the thorn birds would be deadly. We want to get out of bed for him, hangover and on. My hopes for 2013. A traffic ward in the island. In fact, anybody official at all. Even a TV licence man. Just for the crack. My hope for 2013 
is that they bring back hanging for a cattle rustling and trespassing. My hopes and wishes for 2013. Wouldn't it be great if ourselves and other could finally put our differences behind us and mix this year at the church, the clocker one still sit on one side and the other folk on the other. There's no winter marrying. We drink stout. They stick to triple X. The brawls in the street have become a daily occurrence. Let's pray for peace 2013. And try to endure those fuckers for 12 months. My hope for 2013 is at the opening gay bar in Hildress.